Rel Trachtenberg here. I'm joining me with Yitzhak Saflis as we discuss a range of digital marketing topics from Google Ads, SEO, Facebook ads, remarketing, and most importantly, the only performance max campaigns from Google. Looking forward to seeing you there. Beryl Trachtenberg, the founder and CEO of Elite Media Tracks. Beryl has 10, over 10 years of experience working with small to large businesses, helping them find the right marketing strategy to maximize their ad spend dollars on digital media. Elite Media Tracks provides Google ads management, consulting services, and yes, they are a Google partner agency. With that intro, Beryl, welcome to Mind Your Business. Thank you for having me. It's, like, it's a pleasure to be here. All right. So the first question is, what's your background and how did you wind up in digital marketing? That is a great question. I originally got started. My brother was actually in the industry and he was sort of, you know, promoting me and pushing me to, to learn and get myself educated in, you know, digital marketing. This is going back about 10 years, you know, 10, 10 plus years. And I took a few courses online and... In that time, I learned about Google Ads. I learned about SEO. Um, and then it was time to look for a job. So I went online. I found something local in an electronics company. And I applied. I met with them. And, you know, I started the following week. And they parked me by a desk. And they tell me, you've got to manage our Google Ads accounts. Um, you, we, we sell thousands of products internationally. And here's our accounts take over for the team. And it's all yours. So I sort of had to learn on the job. Right. I had to really just click on every single metric. I never had any hands-on experience before. And I really just sat down and went through every single metric, every single piece of information, and had to learn from the ground up, which is really the best way to actually That's learn, right. which is on the job. So talk about founding Elite Media Tracks 10 years ago. You got started. What was like your, uh, in the first year or two, what was like the biggest challenge you ran into? So the biggest challenge with running any Google Ads agency, and I would say any business in general, is picking up clients. You have to um, promote yourself. You know, I started this as, you know, at, sort of accidentally, where I was working full time. And then I bumped into a friend and he told me that he works at a company, a pretty large healthcare company, and they were actually advertising on Google. So I said, hey, you know, if they're doing it, maybe it's something for me. Maybe I can help them out. I pitched him, you know, a couple lunch breaks later and a couple meetings in the car, and I started working with them. And from there, you know, thank God, as things progressed, I started working with more companies and, you know, getting to a point where it, you know, I was sort of had, you know, two feet in both worlds, and I had to make the decision to go full time with my agency. Now, Beryl, let's get into brass tacks in terms of your your world. Here's a question that comes up all the time, again, here even at Bottom Line. Please explain the difference between Google AdWords and SEO. It's a great question. So mo everyone knows they're two different things. You know, Google Ads is those paid ads on the top. SEO is the organic rankings. But a lot of people sort of blur the definition of the two. SEO, I mean, they both fall under the umbrella of search engine marketing, where you're basically marketing in order to get your ranking, your listing to the top of the search engine result, right? Now, Google obviously offers precedence to ads, you know, the top three to five spaces. You know, there's no more sidebar ads like they used to have, but the top three to five spaces, and if it's a product search, there will actually be images as well, will be given to ads. So ads gets you to the top, top, top of the page, whereas search engine optimization will get you the organic listing, which falls right under that. In, in order to do that, you it's really about telling Google you are the best result for what people are searching for, which then gets you indexed in Google's big filing cabinet, saying that this person matches that actual search term. So now let's even, again, hold on to that and jump in to sure. as far as Google AdWords. What, where does someone start? How does someone know that they're really an ideal fit for digital marketing, specifically Google AdWords? And, and it's a loaded question and take your time to plow through it. What are types of businesses that really doesn't make sense for? It's a good question. It's a great question. Um, so I say this, obviously, I might be a little biased, but there really is no better lead you can get on the internet than Google ads, specifically referring to the search department, because 
it's like you're walking down the street and somebody comes up to you and says, hey, I'm looking for the service that you provide. You shake hands and you take it from there. You know, it's people are expressing intent in real time and you can connect them and you can talk to them and you can have a conversation. Your ad should speak to the search term that they're searching about. And then the landing page experience should bring them that same comfortability where they feel like this guy, this company knows what I'm talking about. They know what I need. And then you lead them into the phone call, the form submission, or the actual online sale, you know, where you'll actually turn it into a profitable, profitable lead for yourself. Now, okay, so let's hold on. I, I understand B2C, right? You have a company, they're selling products, they're selling cameras, equipment. Sure. Of course, they have to be on there. And and I imagine that the that all the primary real retailers, if they're <laughs> if they're in the game, they're paying for Google ad dollars. What about B two B? Does it make sense for them? And and what is the cost structure like between paying for a lead on B two C versus B two B? Sure. So that's another another great question. Um, so B two B is your it, the the strategy obviously is different. On your B two C campaigns, you're focusing on product related searches. You're very high intent, very high conversion rates where you're you're advertising for. Um, in B two B you are focusing more on information people are people need to know things they need to get informed and google owns search you know they have 90 percent market share obviously there's Bing. you know we'll get to that there's other means on the internet where people can learn information but when it comes to the main source for anyone learning about anything people come to google they search and when they do when they research companies or when they research um information about different areas and industries the B2B companies can connect with them and place themselves as the thought leaders and the 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 innovators in that in that industry. We're speaking with Beryl Trachtenberg. Beryl, how can people find out more information about your digital marketing um, company? So I'm on LinkedIn. I'm pretty active there. I, I, I wouldn't call myself an influencer because that's a little bit too much, but I have a nice following and I'm active. I try to post daily. So I would say the best way is to go to LinkedIn, um, search for my name. I'm Beryl Trachtenberg, the Google Ads guy. And you can find me over there. You can connect with me, follow me, message me, and get all my contact information. My guest this evening, Beryl Trachtenberg. He is the founder and CEO of Elite Media Tracks. Beryl has over a decade of experience in the world of digital media, specifically in Google Ads and, and other things as we'll get to. And he is a Google partner agency. Beryl, here's just a, uh, you know, I, I, you probably face with this all the time. You know, people will call you up and say, listen, um, I have someone running my Google ads. What, what, why do I really need to go to an agency? What's the advantage of going to, the, uh, to an agency? What do you bring to the table as opposed to me trying to fiddle with it myself? So I, I could really answer that with more of a specific example. Because sure. Obviously, I get that question all the time. Um, the first thing I do, which is a very simple account optimization technique, but sadly very overlooked, is you can jump into your search term reports where you actually, you know, you select keywords for your campaign and there's different match types, how you select, the way you select. But then there's the actual terms that people search to generate your ad and then click on it and come to your website. So when you jump into a search term report, which is offered in the Google Ads platform, you can actually see the real search terms. So I had a very large law firm reach out to me recently and they said, hey, why do we need you? We're doing a great job. You know, we're spending and we're getting leads. And I say, great. I said, let me take a look at your account and I'll tell you if there's anything I can do for you. You know, I'm not going to I'm not going to say I can always make an account better. But if I look and I see there's opportunity, the first thing I do is I go into the search term reports and I ask them, I said, hey, listen, I see you're advertising for attorney and legal related keywords. I'm like, do you have, do you offer these services, you know, A, B, and C? They're like, no, we only offer other services. I'm like, well, half of your ad spend for the past six months has been going to services you don't even provide. Half of their ad spend was many, many thousands of dollars, and it was a pretty easy sale when you can find low-hanging fruit like that in accounts. And that's very often overlooked, no question about it. Wow. So again, so walk, walk us through this. So you do an analysis initially, and that's where you, you look at the keywords and you see yes. right away if they're if they're adding things that are 
if someone doesn't know what they're doing, they're adding those words because they're part of a broader definition. Exactly. But it's not being tichtig. It's not. It's not exactly the keywords. The keywords are the actual pipeline. You know, like people overlook it. They think just select keywords and let's get started. The keywords are the pipeline. That's what brings the water into your account. If your pipeline is not clean and it's not properly set up, you're going to have wasted ad spend. There's no question about it. Now, if you're spending a couple hundred dollars a month, then okay, what's the big deal? 25% of that goes to waste. But when you're spending tens of thousands of dollars a month on leads, which companies live on leads from Google ads, then you end up spending a lot of money on wasted, wasted keywords. All right. So now, is there a way for someone to kind of test drive Google ads to see if it's the right fit for them without having to blow through tens of thousands of dollars. I mean, I, I, I imagine some of the accounts you oversee are, are spending tens of thousands of dollars a month, perhaps. So it's, it's, it's a big problem that comes with Google ads. There are a lot of companies and people who are interested in advertising on Google, but they see it as a very large expense that they have to get into in order to, you know, between the actual ad spend hiring an agency, account setup fees, management fees, you're looking at tens of thousands of dollars before you can even really say, hey, does this work or not? So that's a great question. And that's a company, that's that's something that companies really need to explore. The, what I tell people who don't have that type of budget is I tell them to really, there's three main things that they need to learn about in order to run campaigns, just, just to sort of test the waters and see if it's for them or not. Um, number one is understanding keyword selection. Um, the match types, how keywords match and what you select. You know, I'm not going to bore you with all the details, but understand your match types very, very well. You know, a parenthesis or a bracket in the wrong place makes a very big difference. And also to understand that there is your search term reports and your keywords. So let's say if I'm advertising for Nike sneakers, right? And I advertise for Nike sneakers as a phrase match. So that can include any other words before or after the keyword. So it could be black Nike sneakers or Nike sneakers for men. So that can include everything. So what you want to do is as you go along, based on your keyword selection, look at your search term reports also and make sure to make sure that you're hitting the right keywords and build out negative keywords from negative keyword lists from your search term report. You can also use it to build your actual keyword lists as well. Okay, but just to hold on, is there a way to kind of try before you buy? Like start small on Google AdWords. So yeah, that 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 would be the idea. The idea will be is to is to sort of spearhead it yourself in the beginning, but to be armed with that information, knowing that you got to keep a understand your match types as well as possible, keep an eye on your search term reports and negative keyword lists. And the third thing is to understand that your ads matter. You know, people think, you know, just throw an ad out there, you know, take Google suggestions and let's hope for the best, but really think about your ad. Think about what the person's searching. Think about the the intent behind the search and write an ad that captivates and leads a person on to make them want to click on your ad and come to your website. Now, regarding Google AdWords, how often should a person be monitoring their account? Should they be checking in? Is it uh, minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day, week by week? Well, so you want you want to, you definitely want to keep a pulse in your account. Um, you could look daily. And you could, you know, everybody, you know, as you run your account, depending on what type of business owner you are, you know, some people are more stand back. Some people are more upfront and on it, on everything. You can look at your account daily. You can see your metrics. I would never, ever make an account decision based on daily numbers. You never want to say, hey, today was slow. Let me do that. Today was this, that, or even a week, you know, let things run for a couple of weeks based on data over a large amount of time. That's when you should actually make decisions. People often, and I would say, I'm not going to say it's the biggest mistake people make, but it's a common mistake people make where they make decisions in their account very acutely with just very little information and say, hey, today's slow. Let's change my bids. Today's fast. Let me let me raise my budgets. You know, you got to think about your account. Slow and steady wins the race, they say, right? Yep. Yep. Now, Google, of course, is the elephant in the room. But however, you did touch on uh, Bing, right? And Microsoft. Yes. Um Perhaps you could even you know, give some suggestions in that regard. And are there any other platforms that potentially people play in regarding ad spend? Sure. So Bing is, I guess you could call it Google's very little brother. You know, it's not completely forgotten about and it still does play a part in most PPC, PPC strategies. Um, Bing sort of understands it's actually officially called Microsoft ads. 
And also Google, it is Google Ads now. That's their new their new terminology for it. They're very focused on the fact that their platform is about more than just AdWords. It's about the ads. They have a broader market. They have display. They have YouTube. They have many different areas where you can advertise. Bing has a tool where they actually sync with your Google Ads account. So if you're running a campaign on Google Ads, you can connect that to a Microsoft Ads Bing account, and you can just run those campaigns directly on Bing Ads. Now, when you do that, you obviously want to make sure that all the data imported properly, because sometimes there are kinks in the process. But you know, Bing understands that they need to cater to that. They know they need to have a connection. You can't import Bing Ads to Google Ads. They don't have that because Google knows that that's not for them. And the one aspect I will mention that Bing does have a slight advantage is, I don't know if you have a Microsoft powered computer, but um, they are constantly pushing Edge on you. And Edge is a Microsoft browser, which pushes you into Microsoft and Bing search. And you get a lot of B2B traffic on Edge. And that's why they do have that little bit of an advantage of when you're running B2B campaigns, you want to be on Bing ads as well, because there are a, a larger market share when it comes to that. Hmm. Now let's go to Facebook, Facebook advertising. How does that fit into the landscape? Um, is it, uh, I mean, it's it's clear it's a better fit for B2C over B2B. Please explain that. All. Sure, so Facebook is a entirely different, whole different world of advertising. Mm -hmm. Like I mentioned earlier, Google is about intent. It's about real time. People are saying, I want this and I want it now. You can talk to them, right? Facebook is more about saying, I have a message to deliver. I'm going to create an audience and I'm going to use that audience to deliver my message. So I am guessing, it's sort of a guessing game. And I'm going to say that people who fall into a certain category of interests and affinities would be best suited for what I have to offer. So when it comes to Facebook, it's audience intent, not intent related marketing. And it's also, you know, they, they call it disruptive marketing. It's not what I'm interested in right now. I'm on Facebook. I'm going through my feed. I'm messaging. I'm contacting. I'm watching whatever I'm doing. And you're trying to tell me something. When it comes to Google, I'm interested in what you have to offer right now. It's relevance and intent, as opposed to Facebook just has that audience, but you can actually deliver the message when you target the right person. Now, is there a way, and, and thank you for clarifying that and explaining that. Sure. So on Facebook, which of course Instagram is part of Facebook as well, so you have a way of kind of interrupting someone's pattern from what they're looking for and dangle a shiny object in front of them. Google, exactly. the person is typing in specifically what they're looking for and then Google feeds that up. Is there exactly. a way through Google ad spend to still gain some type of way of, 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 of getting on someone's radar screen, even though they didn't actually specifically ask for that item. Meaning, can you interrupt also through Google? 100%. So Google, like I said, they made that switch a couple of years ago where they went from Google AdWords to Google Ads because they everybody associated Google advertising with search engine marketing, where you advertise to someone who's searching for something. Google has a much larger network of media where you can advertise. There's their entire display network, which covers millions of websites and millions of apps. And most importantly, it covers YouTube, where most people, when they want information, when they need to learn things, DIY, and they want to get information, they'll go to YouTube to learn visually. And that's where Google has the opportunity for you to advertise to people as they're learning. Yeah. That that was an amazing pickup years ago when 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 Google yeah. swallowed uh, YouTube, because they're Actually. aggregating all that information and all that data. So mm -hmm. therefore, would you say uh, a, a company's marketing approach should factor in also a presence on YouTube? Not all companies. It, it depends on what you're looking to accomplish. If you're looking for branding, you're looking for awareness, or if you're looking to expand your search, where you're where you can sort of you can remarket to people on YouTube as well. So instead of me just, you know, using Google, Google's audiences and Google's interests to target you on YouTube, I can use audience marketing based on if you visited my website, I could remarket to you. And Google is more than happy to expand that audience where you can include similar audiences. So I can take people who visited my website, even people who interacted or converted on my website, I could plug that into a display campaign 
via remarketing and I can expand it with a Google expansion audience, which a lot of people do. And it does work very well in certain circumstances. We're speaking with Beryl Trachtenberg, founder of Elite Media Tracks. Beryl, how can people find out more about your company? You can find me on LinkedIn. I'm, I'm pretty active there. I try to post daily and my contact information is there. Connect with me on LinkedIn and, and find me there. Mind Your Business with Theosex Atlas right here on 710 WOR. My guest this evening, Beryl Trachtenberg from Elite Media Tracks. And we're talking about various aspects of digital marketing. Mar any company that's out there today, marketing in 2023, has to have some some element of a digital component to their campaign, some primarily digital component, and some a variety of different marketing, you know, tricks in their in their mix and their uh, in their in their magic bag of uh, of reaching clients, lead generation, retention, and so many other areas that a company needs to focus on in in order to scale. Beryl, um, a, a couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago, actually, uh, Google announced Pmax Performance Max campaigns. What is that all about? And could you really? explain it and perhaps even share some examples of campaigns that you've brought onto Performance Max and what the result was. Performance Max is Google's new product that they're pushing. They're telling everybody advertise on Performance Max. It's It really is Google telling advertisers that we want to take over the reins. You know, we know what's going to happen. We know who's going to buy. We know when they're going to buy. And we can reach all those people on multiple channels. It's not about search anymore. It's not about YouTube. It's not about display. It's not about Gmail. It's a broad marketing initiative where you plug information into Google. You give them assets. You give them audiences. You give them keywords. And they will go and find you leads and find you clients. Now, obviously, everyone in Google, all advertisers are skeptical because when you give Google the reins to take over your spending and your account, obviously, they're going to try to push as much as they can. So, you have to go in there with a little bit of let me try this, but also make sure you're keeping reins in your campaign so you understand what's going on. Okay, so perhaps you could share an example of a client that you brought on to Pmax. Perfect. So a specific example, I recently had a company reach out to me where they were running multiple shopping campaigns, and I took their campaigns, which were performing mediocrely, and I moved them over to a Performance Max campaign, and we saw tremendous success. The company's sales literally blew up almost overnight. You know, obviously, there's no magic button in Google, but when there is a magic button, it's wonderful to find it. And it worked incredibly for them. We scaled their spend. The campaigns were doing amazingly, and we've really been progressing and really just spend. You know, it's it's one of the best campaigns and that you can find in Google is when you can really just raise your spend and just see those sales come in. So you're spending $10,000, you're making $100,000, you spend 20, you make two. When that happens, that's like the golden zone and you sort of keep pushing that envelope until there's a pushback where you're not seeing those sales, but when you can progress and just keep pushing, that's where you'll see this, that with these specific campaigns, we found that and that worked very well. Now, that, a okay, yeah. a term, a general term regarding Google Ads is uh, remarketing. Can you explain what the, what are the mechanics of remarketing? What does that actually mean? Right. So re remarketing in most cases is pretty much an integral part of any campaign you run. People don't buy on the first click. People don't convert on the first introduction. You know, you shake somebody's hand at the networking event, you're not necessarily doing business. Actually, you can say you're necessarily not going to be doing business on that first shake, right? You need to talk to them again. So if that person comes to your website and then they leave, you need to continue the conversation. So remarketing gives you that capability where you can follow that person. You know, it's that pair of shoes you looked at on the internet and then they followed you around for the rest of your life. So this is the ability to do that. When it's annoying, it's annoying, but when it works, it actually works very well and people appreciate it. When you can reconnect with them, they get an ad in Gmail or on YouTube, or as they're browsing a new site, they come back, you provide a little bit more information and you can restart the conversation and answer questions that they have and use that to nurture the relationship. Okay, so that means, for example, if someone goes and searches for something, then if they then go to uh, weather.com, whatever it is, they'll see some, the ads exactly. that pop up are ones that are based on what you search for in Google. Exactly, exactly. It will be, and the, the audience is built off of your website visitors. So 
people who visited my website, if I'm running a direct response campaign, targeting people who are searching for things, when they come to my website, they are most likely not going to convert on that first click. I'm not going to get them to submit that form. I'm not going to get them to call me or purchase. So I need to continue that conversation, target them again as they're browsing the internet or moving along through Gmail or YouTube. Now, is there a particular, I, I know this is a broad question, but just is there a particular budget that a, uh, a, a company that's getting started should have in mind that they should identify and set aside for Google Ads? So that's that's a tough question. I get that often. You know, people say, I want to I want to look into what's a good starting budget. So I like to get enough data in the first on a monthly basis where you can use that to make decisions. If you're getting 100 clicks a month, I can't make a decision based on that. I need a significant amount of data, usually a thousand clicks, you know, will give you that information. So it really would vary by industry and you sort of have to work backwards. You have to figure out what your cost per click would be, which you can use, you know, Google has forecasting tools where you can see how much the estimated cost per click in your industry would be. And based on that, I would say times that by a thousand, you want to be more conservative, go a little lower. You want to be more generous, go a little higher. You don't want to drag things out where it takes months to get enough information in order for you to make decisions. That's just annoying. Better to get things done faster. Now, here's just a, uh, I guess maybe a harsh reality. What happens if someone is uh, starting on a campaign and they're investing and they go on their own per on their own computer or on their own phone and they type it in and it doesn't come up for them? Like, dang, it doesn't come up. I love it. If I would check my phone right now, I would probably have one to two messages from clients telling me that I searched for my ad and I couldn't find it. It happens all the time. And so it's really very simple. And the answer usually is, is you're not spending enough or you can't really spend enough. Meaning, let's say you're advertising in an industry where now I don't want to bore you with like the mathematics of it. So I'll try no, to keep but it explain, simple. explain. This is a very interesting. If, yeah. Let's say your average daily budget is a hundred dollars, mm -hmm. right? Keep the numbers basic. Yep. And the average cost per click in your industry is one dollar, right? So if you're going to get for every a hundred searches, you're going to get one click. Let's say your click through rate is one percent, right? Mm -hmm. So in one thousand searches, you're now using up your one hundred dollar budget, right? So if the areas that we're targeting has a hundred thousand to two hundred to three hundred thousand searches a day in your industry chances are that you most likely will not be showing up and if your ad is showing up when you search it's probably because i programmed it to bid higher when you search for it in order that i don't get the question the next time around you know <laughs> so okay what well, what what range do you deal with in cpc and cost per click uh, like kind of what's what's the well the lowest I guess might be a penny or a couple of pennies and what's like the highest because it's the, that means that the ROI has it's, to be really good it gets, yeah it gets crazy out there it really really does um, you have markets where cost per clicks are well over the hundred dollar range wow. when it gets to, I think I think historically um, the personal injury field is the highest cost per click you know I guess you're dealing with average settlements in the tens of thousands of dollars. So you have people who are willing to pay hundreds of dollars for a click. If 100 clicks gets me one $30,000 settlement, so do the math, you know, it's a pretty profitable click for me. You know, I personally dealt with a campaign recently where we actually had two very large companies that they were bidding on each other's keywords. And I was literally watching, you can, there's something called auction insights in your account where you could see who's bidding on your keywords. So I had a client, we're bidding on his brand and month over month over month, He's bidding on his competitor's keyword. His competitor is bidding on his brand's keyword. And their cost per clicks literally started in the $1 range. And it was almost getting to $100 where the two of them got on the phone and they both agreed to not bid on each other's keywords anymore. That's how bad it got. Pretty <laughs> wild. They, wow. 
We're speaking with Beryl Trachtenberg. He is the founder of Elite Media Tracks. And uh, of course, we talked about PMAX, right? The Performance Max, which uh, Google is uh, promoting and, 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 and really, you know, they put a lot behind that one over the last few months. And, uh, and uh, Beryl discussed that earlier on. Now let's just, you know, talk about a, a, a key question, and that is tracking success. And I'm sure you're faced with this all the time. How does one go about determining if a, if a campaign is successful and tracking it, tracking it along the way? Sure. Um, this definitely touches back on what we spoke about earlier with the difference between advertising for B2B or B2C companies. When you're a B2C company, you're selling products online to customers, e-commerce companies, it's full spectrum tracking. I see every click I got, I see the exact keyword that was searched, and I see that directly tied to every single product I sold. So that gives me the ability to make very informed decisions based on what uh, on my account performance. When it comes to lead gen or B2B campaigns where you are, where there's sort of a break in the information flow, you know, I'm getting the phone call, I'm getting the form submission, but what's happening next? That's That's something a lot of advertisers struggle with and believe it or not, there are very large companies that you would think have everything together. It's very uncommon to find a company that actually has their conversion tracking perfectly set up where they know exactly where every single advertiser advertising dollar went and exactly which result they can attach that to. Attribution is something that every single company struggles with. And there comes a point where you just need a lot of very, very specific and meticulous systems in place to know how to do that properly. Now, okay, but just to hold on to that is that, you know, when people would would typically run an ad campaign, let's say in a print publication, so you know that it's very hard to connect the dots. Yeah, you could have a coupon, you could have a specific number, a specific extension, et cetera. But with Google ads, one of the primary points of, of that, that make it so successful and that make it so attractive for a company in terms of marketing is that, hey, I'll know exactly the result, right? The ROI for every dollar spent. Is that not true? It's true when you're selling in e-commerce. When you're doing e-commerce and your products are being sold online on your website, you have that exact attribution from click to purchase. You know exactly what happened but there is a break in communication when it comes to B2B or lead gen, it doesn't even have to be B2B specifically, where the, the person submitted a form or called me, but I don't know what happened next. And that's why having the right systems in place, it could be a call tracking software, the proper CRM, the proper CRM with the right integrations and tools. The one thing that you need to know is that it's not simple. And the best thing to do is think about everything first. When you think about, I'm gonna get phone calls, how are you going to track the phone calls? How are you going to know which keyword generated that call? And how are you going to mark that in your system to know that this call and this lead and this record actually turned into a customer for you? The same thing with form submissions. You have to make sure that everything is seamlessly placed. And it really is something that almost every single company struggles with getting that perfect mix where they can track every advertising dollar to every single dollar that they made in revenue. So Beryl, just holding on to that and you, and, correctly pointed out that you should think through the whole process. Um, what are some of the, you had mentioned CRM, maybe what, what are some of the, either if you want to share the names of, this, of the actual software that you recommend, sure. or even just the, the category of the type of tools that really one should think about when they're embarking in a very proactive ad sure. spend on Google. If you're serious about your marketing and you want to make sure that you can you can scale and you can know where to scale, you need the proper CRM set up. It doesn't have to be the fanciest. You don't need Salesforce. You don't need the most, but you need something that has a Google Ads integration. So every time you get a lead, you know where it came from exactly. You can at the end of the month, you can look at reports that tell you, I got X amount of leads. Each lead came from this ad, this campaign, this ad group, and these keywords. And I can say this is working and this is not working. I you know recently I started working with a client who was struggling with that tremendously. They were getting a lot of leads, they were getting a lot of traffic, they wanted to scale, they wanted to spend, but they didn't know where to put that money. We set them up with the CRM. It's not something I usually do, but in this case, I had worked with this client for a long time. I had built them up literally from the beginning of their company, and I helped them and guided them in setting up their CRM. Now we have beautiful reports we bang out at the end of every month 
where we can see every single lead they got, every single lead that was closed, and exactly where it came from. And we can put more money where it counts and take the money away from where it doesn't. All right. Now let's talk about, um, I mean, it, Google AdWords, of course, uh, and, and uh, Google Ads, you know, just to be more, you know, the, the, the correct terminology these Ad days. Ad yeah. Marketing, you know? Market jargon correctness. Yeah. Because, <laughs> and I imagine that, you know, someone's dating themselves. If they say Google AdWords, yes. they're like a little bit I dating. I wasn't going to say anything, yeah. yet, but now you mentioned it, you know, it's Google, out there. <laughs> Google Ads, Google Ads. <laughs> Google ads is right. you got to in the beginning, you had to say it a hundred times. People were like back and forth. <laughs> At this point, it's already pretty much, it's pretty much done. You know, the jury's out on it. <laughs> Regarding Google ads, of course, mm -hmm. the great advantage is that you're getting a very qualified lead because the person out there is specifically searching for what you have to offer. However, the disadvantage in terms from a marketing perspective is that you're not it, it it doesn't have a way that you're proactively reaching customers as right. you do with a cat a print catalog via direct mail or a or email marketing. How does let's hold on to email marketing? How does email marketing integrate with Google Ads? Right. So if you're running Google Ads campaigns and you want to make every single click work for yourself, you need to be sure that you have a excellent email marketing strategy in place. I will, especially in e-commerce where people are just bombarded with ads and no shopper is just purchasing the first thing they see, they're going to research, they're going to price check. You know, if they're not on Amazon and they're coming to websites, they're going to be doing their research. No one's buying on the first click. You need to get their email. You have to make sure that you have a strategy in place that you have a very high conversion rate on your email form submission pop-up. Once you gather someone's email, the marketing is free afterwards. You paid for the click, you got them. After that, you can market to them for free and you can also have their profile in whatever you know email subscription tool you're using and you can remarket to them, abandoned cart emails, browse abandonment emails. You can really go strong until they get so upset at you and just unsubscribe or spam you, you know? <laughs> Now, of course, with email, there's two different ways. One is like you touched on list rental or having it go through a third party. And one is building up your own house sure. file. Any tips on that? Any platforms that you recommend in terms of uh, really acing it on, on email marketing? Sure. So there's there are a lot of options you know, that you can opt for. I personally have been working with Klaviyo with a few clients, and it has, it's just an amazing tool. It's not cheap but it is worth its weight in gold as far as its functionality and capabilities where you can get the finest detail about your customer, who they are, what they did, if it's customer retention strategies, if it's bringing them to that first sale, it's building loyalty. Klaviyo really builds out. This is not an ad for Klaviyo at all. I just happen to really be happy with their product and I, I, I do recommend it. Okay. And coming full circle, how yeah. does that tie into a company's Google ad spend? Sure. So if you're running ads, you're getting that first click, you're paying for it, right? You want to maximize on that. You want to capitalize on the opportunity. You got the person, you got their attention, you brought them to your website. Now's your chance to attack. You know, it's your chance to get them, bring them into your email marketing system and remarket to them an email for free. People always say email marketing is free. It's technically free because you're not paying for the click, but obviously there's a lot of infrastructure that goes into setting up your email properly. Okay, as we approach the close of the show, and thank you for sharing so many you know, uh, great you know, points of information as it relates to Google Ads and in general, the world of digital marketing. Um, let's talk about AI. There's a lot of talk right now. Um, sure. uh, of course, chat GPT, Perhaps you can explain what that's all about and where you see that heading. Sure. So I, I don't think the human race is coming to an end yet. You know, <laughs> I don't think every single job is going to be replaced with artificial intelligence. It's a lot of fun to play around with. And there's definitely been a crazy amount of hype on it. Just yesterday, we had the CEO of Google. Obviously, they're gonna, they've are they been experiencing the pressure. You know, if chat GPT can offer a lot of information they're on Google's radar. Google's all about information. And if I can get that information from somewhere else, Google's going to start sweating. And, you know, they came out with their press release yesterday where they're introducing a new tool. I don't know. They didn't say exactly how it's going to be implemented on the search bar. I'm not exactly where it's going to be. They're calling it BARD. No explanation on that either. 
but they're going to be offering that as a similar to chat GPT tool built on AI. They also made it abundantly clear that they've been dabbling and basically, I mean, it's to give them credit, most of their marketing and tools and they're built around AI where you learn about people, you learn how they act, you learn about their, their habits and what they do and what a converting customer looks like. And then you can copy that blueprint and they can sort of predict who's going to buy and who's not going to buy. So AI is definitely the powerhouse of Google's technology. And they even were pretty clear and quick to say that a lot of chat GPT was built on technologies that Google themselves developed. Obviously, they're going to take credit for it. And I'm sure they're going to be calling chat GPT and offering them a nice buyout as well. You know, <laughs> there's no question that's going to happen. Incredible. Beryl, how can people find out more about Elite Media Tracks? I'm on LinkedIn. I'm pretty active. I try to post daily. And you can find me there. I'm Beryl Trachtenberg, the Google Ads guy. Connect, and we can pick up the conversation over there. What an incredible show with Beryl Trachtenberg of Elite Media Tracks. Um, this show, of course, will go up on YouTube in short order within a couple of weeks. Uh, and if you want to be notified, of course, who doesn't want to be notified? Simply well, on YouTube, we're at 710 WOR, Mind Your Business. Click on subscribe and you'll automatically be notified if you have notifications turned on when this show goes live. And every single show that we record also by video goes up and it's uh, free on YouTube, right? That's, that's the, that is the hub of video information in today's world. Well, this wraps up an incredible edition of Mind Your Business. Tune in again next Sunday night for another great edition of Mind Your Business right here on 710 WOR, The Voice of New York. Have a successful week. Thank you for watching and make sure to subscribe to this channel and be notified every single time a new video goes live. Don't miss out on any of the weekly interviews that I have with top business leaders, sometimes Fortune 500 executives. Hit subscribe and turn on notifications.